p.m. in Burlington. Time to get fucked up. Okay, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I love it. I'm very happy to be back here. I've uh, done a few shows at this comedy club. I really love it. I love Burlington. I live in New York City, but this is where I'm going to move when I decide to start my cat farm. You know? this. <laughs> Fire up the cat ranch, you know? When I start, like, making sweaters out of cat fur, this is where... I'll start my small business. <laughs> Fuzzy Friends <laughs> by Madeline Murphy Smith. I, <laughs> I am really excited to be here. This is a, this is a very nice town, you know? I, I've, I've mentioned this a couple times on the shows and, and I, I don't mean this as a criticism of your town. I would, I would never criticize the land of Bernie Sanders. I would never, I would never. But I will say, you guys have a lot of Black Lives Matter signs. Great. Just a note. Um, you did not remember to invite the black people. <laughs> now, I know as a white woman, I might not be the one who should be pointing this out, but I just, just if I could just offer one critique of your town, I would say... If the, if the Black Lives Matter signs are that much more than the black people, you, we gotta do some outreach, you know? We gotta do, cause I feel like you guys are like, if we just put up like a 50 more signs, they are gonna move here. They are gonna be here any second. I live in a, actually an all black neighborhood. I am the one white person. And that's fine, that's good, that's how it should be, you know? I feel like I've been in the majority for long enough, it's fine, I feel happy in my neighborhood, but I will tell you, in my all black neighborhood, I do not see, I've seen like one Black Lives Matter sign. You guys are doing a lot, like, I feel like you guys have a, a feeling of guilt that you're trying to explain, you're like, oh, we never did anything wrong here in Vermont. We just made mittens for Bernie and love black people and love gay marriage. I don't know. I don't know. You're doing a great job. You really are. You're doing amazing. I, uh, I <laughs> Damn, okay. One person was like, aha! It's like, <laughs> like the revolution has begun when I turn this person crazy. <laughs> like, I am excited, I am excited to be here though, I really do. I feel like it is a good place for me as a lesbian. You guys already knew I was a lesbian because opening for Deanne Smith and also wearing this outfit, you knew. <laughs> no, no, we all were on the same page. But it's confusing because titties are out. You're like, what, what's happening? But then blazer, but then long hair, but then undercut. You know, it's like <laughs> confuser, it could go anywhere, you know? Anything could happen at this show. Anything could happen, we could fall in love, we could, we could integrate your town. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, it's integrated. I heard, I was standing back there, I heard Ash be like, are there any people of color here? And like two people were like, oh, woo. <laughs> don't be too loud. <laughs> I was like, it's okay, I'm, we're gonna be okay. We, you don't have to raise your hand or anything, it's not that type of situation. But I'm very excited to be here. My life, I feel like, is going pretty well. It's, it's things, things are going pretty well. I recently got engaged. Thank you. <laughs> Gay engaged, which is better than straight engaged. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> I like how you guys actually did clap louder for that. You're like, fuck straight people. That's <laughs> it's good. The brethren, thank you. The allies, I, I know that you guys are allies. You also have a lot of pride flags, but I feel like everyone who works here is, everyone who works, I don't know what I said works. I'm staying in the hotel, and like as soon as I checked in to the hotel, just the front desk staff were the fucking gayest people I've ever seen in my life. Like is it, this does feel like a very queer town, you know? There was like, <laughs> A non-binary person with the wildest name I've ever heard. I won't repeat it because I must respect their privacy, but I was like, <laughs> that's enough. You know, like, <laughs> we've taken it a little too far. One time, my, <laughs> one time my girlfriend, my girlfriend who we are now, well now my fiance, 
Uh, <laughs> what an embarrassing word. Uh, my fiance, before we were together, this was before we were together, they also are a comedian and they were doing a show and they were approached by another non-binary person after the show who was like, I'd love to take you out sometime. And my girlfriend was like, what's your name? And they were like, Kale. <laughs> and my girlfriend was like, no, thank you. Um, we can't, no, that's a little too much. But if there is a Kale in the audience, I love you and I support you. And <laughs> keep, keep on your journey. Okay, recently got engaged. That's what we were talking about. Recently got engaged and I waited a full year of dating, which I think for lesbians is pretty good. I think, right? Because usually you're like, move in today. Like you go on two dates and you're like, you live with me. So I waited a full year and we had already been friends for three years before that, which I think is 45 lesbian years. I think that's pretty good. I think that's a reasonable amount of time. I'm a 33 year old woman. I feel like that's a reasonable amount of time, but I do have some straight friends, sadly, but <laughs> because I am a supporter of their rights. I, I love their rights. I support them, I march in the parade with them. I am the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I'm like, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> silly, that's silly. No, I, um, I do have some straight female friends, very, very good friends from high school who were like concerned that I had gotten engaged after only a year of dating because they like live in Pennsylvania and they're like, <laughs> What? Like, they like couldn't comprehend. And I was thinking like, I, I get that. I really do, I really do understand that because I feel like if you're a straight woman dating a man, you have to wait at least five or six years to be like, is this man going to chop my body into pieces? <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. You're clapping, but also presumably a male person. Okay, that's you're like, yes, we do chop bodies. <laughs> we are known for the chopping. Who were you pointing at? Are you pointing at your partner? Are you guys together? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got you guys, and I don't want to make any assumptions, but you guys are a gay male couple. Is that we're accurate? Okay, so there's not so there's not as much chopping involved in that. I don't think. <laughs> oh, your previous, <laughs> you're like, well, my previous boyfriend is dead. Uh, <laughs> he is buried. <laughs> he is deep in Lake Champlain, but we don't need to. <laughs> what happened in your previous relationship? Are you okay? You, you're missing uh, some fingers, a limb. Are you okay? Okay, you look fine, <laughs> physically there. fine, but mentally. Right, what do you? What I'm do you? All there. <laughs> do you think so? Do you think he's? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> he's like not really. Okay, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad that you survived, and now you guys are together, and you're happy. It's going well. Yes. In oh, congratulations! They're getting married in December. <laughs> look at all these fucking. Gays getting married. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't stand for this. No, that's great. I'm very excited for you. That's awesome. Now, how long were you guys together before you got engaged? Um, this weekend is four, year, um, four years. This weekend. Okay. Three years. Three and a half years before we got engaged. Okay, so that's reasonable. That's reasonable. So that's how you know you're not dykes because <laughs> you were... After three and a half years, I've already like been with you and broken up with you and then gotten back together with you. And then you sent me like a weird astrology meme at 3 a.m. And I was like, Colleen, what does this mean? You know, that's so Scorpio of you. Uh, what are you trying to say? Uh, Colleen, <laughs> this is her real name. She hasn't spoken to me since we broke up, really, in like years ago. But here's just a little fun fact. Just a little fun, a peek behind the curtain. I'll just tell you this very quickly. Uh, this, this weekend, um, Cameron Esposito was supposed to be here, but she had to cancel, sadly. And it's okay, because we're all having a great time. I love Deanne. We love me. We love me. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, we love me. We love me. Not as famous of a lesbian, but still wearing a blazer. So... There's power, you know, there's power in the, in the tits. I don't know. There's power in me. And so we feel fine. But it was, you know, it was a bit of a change quickly because I was driving up from New York City and I got the email and they were like, hey, actually, Thursday night, can you headline? And I was like, sure, I'm a star. It's fine. So 
I am. It's true. It's true. It's true. Even though I have not as many Instagram followers, still a star. So my ex-girlfriend saw that I posted, hey, I'm actually headlining tonight. Come on out, blah, blah, blah. And she sent me this text, which, which I think, I thought, in my mind, was, was supposed to be nice. But she hadn't talked to me in, like, years. And she texted me, and she said, oh, bummer that Cameron canceled, but that's really cool that you're headlining. And she was like, because, you know, the people in Vermont, they're going to be like, those Vermont hipsters, they're going to be like, we saw Madeline Smith before she was famous. <laughs> I know. And I really think in her mind, she was like, this is a nice thing to say. I said that last night at the show. I said, my ex-girlfriend, Colleen, Irish Catholic, by the way, and doesn't understand human emotions. She... <laughs> she said that to me, and I think she thought it was nice, right? And, and I think that she meant it in a nice way. And then this, like, very butch, stern woman over there in the corner said, no, she didn't! <laughs> I was like, what? She was like, she didn't mean it nice. I was like, oh, damn. Okay, you want to text her for me? Like, I don't know. <laughs> We've been broken up for fucking years. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, it's okay. It's fine. You guys are seeing me before I'm famous. That's all. It's okay. I feel really good about that relationship not happening anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, I am engaged to, to a person who generally says nicer things to me. Uh, my girlfriend, my fiance, goes by they, them pronouns. I'm telling you this now because this is Burlington. You guys are cool with that, obviously. <laughs> obviously. But I do feel like sometimes in comedy I have to say that because sometimes using the word they can be confusing. Like, I think it's not that confusing, but it can confuse people sometimes in audiences. And I think that sometimes I'll say, oh, my girlfriend, they said this. And then people think that I have, like, a harem of girlfriends, like... <laughs> I'm gonna like open this and be like, come on out. <laughs> it's like a gaggle of gals, you know? It's like 10 girls and I'm like, fight for my love. No, it's just one. It's just one, just crushing, just crushing one puss. Just destroy. <laughs> just crushing it. No, that's so aggressive. That's not. That's not what I do. I don't do that. But we, uh, we are very, we are very in love. But the thing is, uh, <laughs> We, we got engaged after a year. We moved in together after nine months, which I think is a reasonable amount of time. We integrated our cats. Our cats. It's a big part of it. It's a big part of a lesbian relationship. Our cats are named Lady Gaga and Janet Jackson. And I think that's how you might know that it's an interracial relationship. <laughs> like, I wasn't the one who was like, here's my cat, Janet Jackson. Like, no, that was a black person who moved in with me. No, that was, uh... And the thing about my girl... And stay with me on this one, because I, I know there's a lot of white people here, so, so stick with me. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay for this next joke. We're all going to be okay. The thing about my girlfriend... <laughs> I, I, I love them so much. They are gender fluid, and, and we all know what that is. This is Burlington, we can keep up, they're gender fluid. So they usually go by they, them pronouns until they feel very mad at me, a white person, and then they say, stop disrespecting a black woman. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please, anything for you. Like, which I think is fair. I really think it's fair. We as whites have dominated for long enough, and I would never want to disrespect a black woman, even if they're only a black woman 40% of the time, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to. I do, I do love my fiance very much. I think that we, I think that our relationship is so great and we, we feel so happy together, but it's weird being in a interracial lesbian relationship because for other people, it like means a lot. Like it like symbolizes a lot. I feel like it's hard to just walk down the street in Brooklyn sometimes because people are like, equality. <laughs> His dream, that's it, there it is. He had a dream, it's walking down the street towards us. <laughs> We're just, so you can't fight, we can't be in a fight because then equality is ruined, you know? Or like, oh, we love each other, everything's fine. Or like, our hands holding is like, the, like a poster or something, I don't know. So 
And the thing is, people people have a lot of thoughts and opinions about interracial relationships. It's weird. I feel like people write a lot of think pieces on it. We probably don't need that anymore, I don't think. One of the groups of people who has the most thoughts and opinions on it, though, I have found has been uh, my mom's church friends <laughs> in upstate New York. And their thoughts are very positive. They're very, very positive. Let me just give you like a quick little... I'll just give you like a, just so you know who I'm talking about. It's like women, <laughs> like Unitarian women, you know? Like white women in their 60s who, their names are Catherine or Susan. And they have so many scarves. They have more scarves than a person should legally be allowed to have. They have so many fucking scars. They have so many scars. They have a pair of glasses on the head, a pair of glasses on the eyes, a pair of glasses on the titties. You guys know what I mean. They run a nonprofit, right? But they're like, don't start a union. Don't even think about unionizing. Or else Catherine will have something to say about it, you know? I'm just trying to paint a picture of who these women are before I tell you the next thing. So we went upstate. And we were meeting these people at my mom's church friends and they were so excited about a lesbian interracial relationship. They were like, this is it. <laughs> this is the dream. And they were like being a little too excited about it in a way that was deranged. Like this one woman, she said, you guys are the most beautiful couple I've ever seen. And you would have the most beautiful children. <laughs> I was like, man, <laughs> I don't know if you understand <laughs> just like basic science, but this is hurting my feelings a little bit because I'm trying so hard to get this bitch pregnant every night. <laughs> every night of my life, I have <laughs> gotten carpal tunnel. <laughs> In both of my wrists, in both, <laughs> both of them. And you guys, my friends in Burlington, that's like not even like a fun little joke. That's just like <laughs> reality. I really did get carpal tunnel in both of my wrists. <laughs> and then I had to go to the doctor and they were like, Think about what you do in a day. Like. <laughs> they were like, whatever repetitive motion you're doing, <laughs> so much, just stop doing it. And I was like, you don't understand, I'm trying to get a wife. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm fully locked into this repetitive motion. I can't stop doing it. Are you fucking crazy? Like, I have to do this. And then I, I felt so, I felt embarrassed about having a sex injury, so I just lied and pretended like I had a job. I was like, I just type, type, type. In. <laughs> I'm just type, type, type it away, baby. Like, I gotta do the reports for the boss. I've never had a desk job, so I don't know what you do, but I feel like you get carpal tunnel, <laughs> but like not in a fun, sexy way. I don't know. Oh man, running out of time, but you guys are so great. I wish I could stay forever. If you want, after the show, we could hang out and you can follow me on the internet. My name is Madeline Smith. I, this isn't a joke, just trying to get the follower count up so that I can keep headlining when more successful lesbians drop out. That's... <laughs> Thank you. When they drop out, <laughs> that's when Smitty steps in. That's when... <laughs> And the, thank you. You're very sweet. You're very kind. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, my name is Madeline Smith. Just so you know, doesn't have an E on the end because my dad thought that the E was superfluous and then ruined my entire comedy career because people can't find me. So it's Madeline Smith. <laughs> Just so you know, you can look me up on the internet. I'm, I'm building a small lesbian army on TikTok now, <laughs> but I'm like 33. I feel like geriatric and I'm like, what's happening? I don't know. I'm doing my best. I really am doing my best. We have a great show for you. Uh, Deanne Smith is going to come out in a minute. No relation. We're not related. But <laughs> they're going to come out in a minute. They're really, really funny. 
this is, uh, I guess this is what I'll leave you guys with. I'll leave you guys with this, even though I would, I'd like to stay forever because I like to move in with all of you. <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you for clapping. Wouldn't it have been awkward if I said, I'd like to move in with all of you, and you're all just like, silent. Like, I don't think so, bitch. Go back to New York. Uh, you were calling out our lack of diversity a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the final thing. This is the final thing I'll tell you. Before the pandemic, um, I've been doing comedy for a while, and, and before the pandemic, I used to be opening for a male comedian on the road. And it doesn't matter what his name was or anything about him, because he was a man doing comedy, so <laughs> we don't care, right? <laughs> we don't care. But at one point, <laughs> about two weeks into our little tour, he wanted to give me his thoughts and his opinions, which as you guys know, is unheard of <laughs> for a straight man, right? Crazy, they usually are so quiet about things, not telling women what to do at all. So he was like, Madeline, I think you're funny, but if you were my wife, I know, I know. I, it was a cre I was like wearing a Carhartt at the time, you know? I was like, <laughs> when, would, when would that happen? Like, he was like, if you, if you were my wife, I honestly would just never allow you to go on the road with a man. I just think it's really inappropriate. I know, I know, me too, me too. I also vomited, thank you. <laughs> I was like, cool, 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 um, cool, cool, diddly dope. Uh, thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. And I was like, well, if you, if you were my husband, I would kill myself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I posted that. <laughs> I posted that joke on the internet and it went a little viral and I was worried, but then I remembered that he unfollowed me. So it didn't. <laughs> I'm Madeline Smith. I'm gonna go. I love you guys. Thank you.